Hello everyone and welcome to the tavern. Yeah, it's a rare moment when you see a cardboard box on the floor of my kitchen. But there's a reason for this. One, the lighting is really good. And two, I couldn't hold myself back. As you can see, it is already a little bit opened. Yes, this is the box of Battletech Kickstarter stuff, which I also hid my address as to not dox myself because obviously I don't want to accidentally do that while discussing all the cool stuff I got. Now, this box isn't that huge. I'm going to show you right here so it's, you know, it's not, not small. So yeah, the box isn't super huge, but the reason for that is because I got the company set, primarily because while I was tempted to go for Battalion, I realized I have to also live. <laughs> so having a crap ton of plastic stompy boys that need to get painted piling up in my craft room is not ideal. Heck, I still have a bunch of stuff I haven't painted because the summer has just made me feel horrible the entire time. Plus, doing the Wolves Dragoons videos has really taken a lot of my free time as well. The idea of having an enormous amount of Stompy Boys is not the greatest thing, but there's still some great stuff to be seen here with the company level set. And to those of you who picked up Battalion or Regiment, good on ya. I would have done it if maybe I had a bigger house. But for now, I'm very happy with what I got. So let's actually dig inside this box. All right, there we go. So we got a nice little plastic bubble over here. And as you can see inside there, it is packed to the brim. And like I said, I'm company level. So this isn't even the biggest box and this isn't the most packing they have to do. Let's dig around through here. First thing we got here is a little set of dice. See that? Take a look at things a little bit closer once we get everything out of the box. <laughs> My hand groping around a little weirdly. Right there they are. Ah. And then of course the pin I chose, Snords Irregulars, one of my favorite. There we go. One of my favorite units. And I know I haven't done a Battletech briefing on them. I was planning on doing it after Wolf's Dragoons. So there it is. It looks actually really nice. And the best part about this pin is I feel like I could wear it with some of my retro clothes and people would just think it's thematic. But if you know Battletech, then you know, which is always great and a fun way to have people go, hey, is that Snords of Regulars? And go, it is, you're a Battletech fan. We can be friends. Reaching like this is, is really annoying. Let me pull this closer, there we go. So next is the coin, right there. It's a little Star League symbol there. I think, these, I think these are pretty cool, honestly. Um, I was actually tempted to buy a few more of the challenge coins. Ended up not doing it, but I think in future Kickstarters, I probably will. All right, so those are like kind of the smaller, looser guys. We've got a few of the salvage boxes right here. So here's this guy right here. So that's my Visgoth, which anyone who was an early adopter got. So we'll have to open up this boy a little bit. And then we got salvage box here. All the way around on it, so you can just see the whole thing. It's also a little bit damaged, which I think is fine. You know, one minor damaged salvage box, not really that big a deal in my opinion. All right, let's see what else we got here. We got, okay, that's kind of blocked by this guy. So let's get this, another salvage box. This one complete, completely fine. Yeah, you can see it's not nearly as wrecked up as the other one. It's fun to kind of go through and find out what kind of extra boys are joining my fight. I have to get new containers is what I'm gonna need to get. Okay, so we got... Okay, so we're gonna start the next phase here. Ooh, big guy. All right. And it's upside down. <laughs> it's also a little damaged right here as well, so... Just bear in mind anyone else who's waiting for theirs, you might be you might, you might get some box damage, but I'm, I'm fine with that. I've had stuff show up from Amazon or from various other online retailers, and I've had that problem before, so it's not a big deal. Anyhow, Salt and Cavalry Lance. You can take a look at that right there. Ah, uh, the light's not gonna be great for you, I'm sorry. We can see a lot of little vehicle parts and stuff there. This will be fun to actually open up and start building. And I like how big the box is too. It really feels like you're getting a lot for your money. Okay, now one more of our standard lance size things. Is everything upside down? Okay. 
So we had our Inner Sphere uh, Pursuit Lance, excuse me, Inner Sphere Pursuit Lance. Looks pretty good. Kind of like the design on the boys here. It's such a nightmare to put everything back in the box. Oh, we got another salvage box. It fell down. So, yay. Third one. These are just going to add up. Eventually, we have a, a castle of a, of a thousand salvage boxes. Okay, so we got that little time. We got, ooh, what is this? Box within a box. Okay. Let's open this bad boy up and see what. What secrets lie inside? What are you hiding from me, box within a box? Is this? Could it be? Oh yes, it is. The statue. Look at that. I need to find a place on my desk for this bad boy. It's not a bad looking mad cat there. It's detailing. I was hoping it was gonna be mass on this is kind of it's a hard plastic, but I kind of would have liked, obviously, metal or something else. But it's nice. I like what it looks like. So this will be somewhere on my desk, probably hanging out with all my Gumpla. So it's going to be really odd, but size-wise, it's probably actually more than accurate to the size of a high-grade Gumpla. I think if I have to double-check the heights, but I might actually, it might actually fit. Uh, I will probably not paint this guy. I'm sure that will upset a lot of people, but I just, I think it looks too nice. If I had a second one, I probably would paint it. Unless someone wants to volunteer as a painter, I'll give you my squadron colors and you can paint it my squadron colors. But yeah, that is nice. That is a nice, very nice boy there. I like what it looks like. Put it here for the collectible pile. Oh, there it is. There's the rule box. We're not gonna get to it yet. We're gonna have to get to these guys first. Aha, I flipped it. All right, so this is our inner sphere recon lance. See there? It's pretty, pretty nice, pretty nice. We'll see these guys a little bit better later when I pull them out of their boxes. Try to organize all my lances together. Let's, oh, and another salvage box. I also bumped the camera. Sorry about that. Yeah, they, they look exactly the same. <laughs> They're supposed to. Man, there'd be a lot of blind box goodness going down here. All right, reaching over to here. Oh, he was actually right side up. Look at that. So here we are with the Inner Sphere Heavy Recon Lance, because sometimes you need larger recon units, like the Steiner Assault Recon Lance, though there are no atlases in this set. Ow, dang it. Don't let me keep hitting the camera. I'm sorry about that, everybody. This is kind of the first time I've had to do such an extensive unboxing. Normally it's, you know, three Gumpla kits, and then I toss the box aside. You can see more and more, more and more right down there. Another salvage boy. All right, and another salvage. Sorry, I didn't even show it in the camera. There, another salvage boy. And another salvage boy. And yes, another <laughs> boy. Man, we're gonna have a lot of these when this is all over. And another one. Man, that's another four that just added to my pile of salvage boxes. This would be a lot of stuff to sort through. Oh, here it is, here it is. Ooh, oof. Fairly heavy too. Wow. Look at the, this is the fancy cover version. Look at that, that was actually probably worth it in my opinion. Although the glare is making it impossible to actually enjoy the, the view of it. But yeah, we're gonna have to open up this guy and it's upside down. I did not realize that, sorry about that. So let's see the back here. Which is probably gonna be the same as the back of the normal box. And one more look here in the front. Yeah, the, the reflection here is not helping anything. Oof, okay. This is a really heavy box too. It's, it's, there's a lot of stuff in there. And that, wait, wait, there is more. What is this? Oh, are these like posters or something? 
I'll have to open this. We have this. <laughs> so we can take a look here. Uh, I think it's the posters. So we'll have to open this up before we can do things. I'll have to figure out. Kind of cool looking. Back here. We'll, we'll open this up and find out all the stuff. Is that everything? I think that's everything. I think that's everything I got. So yeah. Uh, that is everything. My hand is open around there. All right, so uh, give me a couple minutes. Well, okay, a couple minutes IRL in video format, you're gonna jump directly to it. So I can organize all this craziness and we can start going through some stuff. All right, so, cut this one up Ooh, looks pretty snazzy. Do everything one handed because I ended up breaking my. Oh, there's a stand. Let's see, there's a stand under here that we got to connect it all together. So I'll take care of that in a minute. But let's take a look at the finders. I got some nice detailing here at the bottom. It's also a lot more sturdy than I thought it would be. It's nice. I don't know when I'll ever use this. I mean, honestly, it might just be better off being a stand on my desk than really anything else. Oh, look at that. So we got some cards here too. And a pilot card. Or, no? Yeah. Actually, I think these might be ruble cards. So that is a large wall of text. No, we should have a pilot card. All right, that's kind of cool too. I didn't expect the pilot cards to come with these. All right, let's put this little stand together and take a look. All right, so here's our pilot card. Decided as usual, and we have unit card. There's, there's all this information here, and then you have touch stuff there. Very nice, but more importantly, here's what it looks like on the stand. That looks pretty cool. Actually, I actually might, I might this, I'll be honest here, I think this guy is just gonna end up on my desk. <laughs> I don't think I'm ever gonna use it in combat. I wouldn't mind to paint it. I don't even know what, I guess I'd make it Merrick colors or something, I don't know. Like Ghostbird Colors, Ghostbird Dominion kind of a thing. I don't know. Anyhow, I don't know if I'll ever paint it, but I do know that it looks pretty cool. All right, let's check out some of the other stuff. All right, so we're looking at the collectibles now. Oh, we got the coin here. Just has a nice little battle mech symbol there. Of course, back, Star League. Pretty, pretty snazzy. I should kind of like this. It has a nice little container on it too here. Um, if this container is supposed to open, I don't know how to open it. <laughs> so, uh, pretty cool though. Do you dig it? I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with it, where it's gonna go, but it is pretty cool. And then of course we have pen. Pen looks really nice. It's made out of nice in the middle here. Pin down to the board inside the little case. Probably gonna put it in with some of my other high quality pins, but I thought it looked pretty Pretty cool and it's nice. It seems like it's decent quality. That's more or less what you want when you're doing these kind of things, obviously. You want your collectibles to be something that can actually be collected. Then the dice, which have their own individual baggies as well. For some reason. <laughs> no idea why. So here they are. Pretty nice. I mean, it's a die. I don't know what's gonna say. They have actually really sharp corners. It's kind of odd. I've never actually bought any of their dice before, so getting these kind of cool. Um, I don't think these are great for reading, unfortunately. Let's see how well they roll. And there you go. So yeah, I mean they're nice. I probably should have chosen a different color. To be honest here, I don't even remember selecting dice, so <laughs> that's on me. I think they match with the Stords of Regulars, I think is what they're supposed to do. So, yeah, um, I guess maybe my next faction will hopefully have dice I can read. All right, let's wrap up the collectibles with the Mad Cat. As you can see, it's fairly well detailed. Not the best lighting here, but even on the back, see some vents, armor. Front, top here, we got 
there in the front, which I showed you earlier. And it is basically a giant version of the Mini. More detailed. Looks pretty cool. Uh, I would have liked this out of something that isn't made out of plastic. I mean, a metal version of this would be awesome. I'm sure it'd be crazy expensive, but it would be awesome. And yeah, like I said, this guy will probably just be on my desk, maybe hanging out to the Visigoth or something, I don't know. But overall, a pretty cool looking design here. All right, so I divided up my salvage boxes here. So we have four of the basic mercenary ones, unless I misread them. And then we have three of the legendary mercenaries and two unique ones. So let's go through one of the unique ones first. This one is the Blood Asp. All right, so it is out of this box. Always we have our cards here. General stats, pilot. There we go. So that's nice. You know, like any standard salvage box, you got your cards. Let's take a look at the Blood Asp though. That's what we're really here for, isn't it? This was one of the reward tier unlocks. One of the more badass looking clan units here. Looks pretty good. Fairly well sculpted. All the crazy guns. Yeah. And if any, if you're, if you're like me and you're a fan of uh, Mecha Commander 2, you know how just insane this unit can actually be. All right, let's get to the next one. Next is our Savannah Master set. This is the box that was damaged. So I do have a bit of a worry when it comes to it. All right, there's the damage on the box again. So I turned it out before. I just tossed it on the floor because that's how much of a jerk I am. We have our cards here. Huh. I don't know if this does even comes with a pilot card, but it looks like it has the uh, cards for a couple different games in there. But open up those cards in a little bit. So here we go. Look how tiny these guys are. I mean, they're supposed to be. It's like tokens. They're basically tokens. So very, very different than what I expected. Um, comes with a few of them, that looks like. Oh, looks like they can come off with tokens. That's not good. I'll probably have to put them together. Just give that a minute. All right, here they are when they're popped into their stand. The stand has three slots, but you can only fit two on each stand. So I guess you could put one on a stand if you want, or two. Uh, frankly, I think I would have been happier if these things were pre-attached, being like this makes it difficult. Also, these guys are so small. I have no idea if, I, if I'll ever paint them. Granted, I don't know how often I'll even use Savannah Masters for that matter. But all right, let's take a look at the Legendary Mercenaries next. Okay, so I opened all three of them. That was smart this time. I just have them set out like this. Okay, the next one is a Caesar. And the card there, Marcus of Avanti's Angels. And you can see your Caesar right here. Looks pretty bulky and cool. Love all the nice guns sticking out. This going to be fun to paint. I like the Caesar. Um, I don't think I'm going to use this guy. I, I'm not going to use Avanti's Angels, like, so <laughs> I'm going to put that to use in some other group. Uh, I remember reading a novel recently that had a Caesar pilot. I don't remember what it was off the top of my head, but I would think I'd much rather do that. Then we have <laughs> another guy named Marcus, because apparently we don't have a lot of name creativity at uh, Catalyst. But this is uh, from a Karen's Armored Cavalry. It's a Devastator. Hell yeah. I am down for getting a Devastator. Look at that. Bulky boy, big gun arm. His head there. Yeah. This will be a lot of fun, not only to paint, but to deploy. I just don't know who I'm going to deploy it with, but I do love the design. Overall, for the three here from the Legendary set, but getting a Caesar and a Devastator? I'm not going to complain about that. So let's go to the final set, which is the standard mercenary set. First one is kind of a letdown, honestly. It's an assassin. Looks kind of cool, though. like the design of it. But nothing too exciting there. You know, an assassin's just an assassin. I don't know how often I'll even use one, but, you know, I'm not going to complain. And here they are, the four of the standard set. Um, odd results. So our first one here is the Firefly. Just 
pretty cool. So I knocked over those cards. Take, take a look at him. Got a nice little close up there. Um, upside down. <laughs> oh, there we go. Uh, looks pretty cool there. I like the way that's done there. Shoulders. I'm looking forward to deploying this. I don't know with who, but I'm going to definitely want to see that guy painted up. It's a locust. Hey, <laughs> locust. Nothing against locusts. I think this has a new pose from the old locust, but it's still a locust. I, I, I opened this up and when I saw the machine, I'm like, is that a locust? And I'm like, it is. And I'm like, nah. I don't know why getting a smaller mechs always just kind of feels like a disappointment, even though I, I'm in desperate need of locusts. After all, they're used in almost every single unit. So having a spare locust means, you know, I could put that into the Great Death Legion. I could put that into the, you know, Sword of Light. I could put that into the Wolf's Dragoons. Speaking of House Karita, by the way, the Shogun. Hell yes. This to me, I think is the big, the big grab of this set. This is one of those units I did want. Look how cool that looks. Shoulder cannon there, the big cockpit. Bulky arms. I like House Karita, guys. And I don't know if you ever, anyone's ever heard me talk about stuff I do. And the final one, not a bad choice either. The Hoplite. That, that's something I expected. I forget that that was even part of this set. Not bad. Just looks kind of, kind of plainish. It's never a huge Hoplite person, but I'm not against it. This could also find itself being a workhorse for my Capellans or for my Merricks, I don't know. But not a terrible unit overall. I would say of these four, I think I like this set a bit more, but the Shogun is huge for me. The Hoplite's pretty good. I've always liked the Firefly. I thought that was one of those just cooler units once it got its rebirth. And the Locust is utilitarian. So at the very least, they give me a unit I can use. So I guess I can't complain about that too much. So that package of things, I was wondering what it was. Yep, I was right. They are posters. I'll just kind of show you how just how big this is in of itself. That's my window. See, that's pretty darn big. And that's not even unfolded. There are two others here. I will cut away to, um, to them fully unfurled, but they look pretty big. So just bear that in mind when getting your posters. Uh, you're gonna need a lot of wall space for these. So here's the first of our two posters, or three posters rather. It is a two-sided poster, it looks pretty cool. There's battle mech there blowing stuff up. And if you just... Pardon me. These are also large posters, so much so I had to actually find a floor space large enough to actually place them, which I do appreciate. And this was one of the wallpapers they had, so we're matching up the wallpapers with the posters, so if you have a specific mech or faction you like, this is a great way of supporting them on your wall, if you can find a frame large enough. I'll say it right now, I don't think this one, at being a tall length like this, really looks as good, but hey, that's down to your own opinion. I do like my infantry versus a giant stompy boy type stories, so I might consider using this side, but but this one might look just a wee bit cooler in my opinion. Although I got the whole glare there, so it's ruining the entire look of the poster. <laughs> but yeah, the posters based off of the wallpapers is kind of nice. Do kind of like them. It's all gonna come down to personal taste or you could just, you know, can't really do both. So you're gonna have to make a choice. But yeah, Let's zoom in a little bit so you get some of the better detailing on this. Got the light ruining it. This is the last of the standard artwork posters. This one looks pretty cool. And honestly, this is the one I would probably go with, except as a Battletech lore expert, how could I not have the unit recognition guide as my poster? Look at that. Look at that. Everything. All the boys. All there on a poster. Freaking awesome. I like this. I know it's not gonna appeal to everybody, but seriously, I might have to put this up in my game room or something. I don't know, I haven't decided yet, but for sure some of these posters are gonna get hung up. Though I'm gonna have to iron out the creases or something first because uh, yeah, that's not gonna look super pretty 
unless it is properly flattened. All right, opening up the bigger boxes, here's the Assault and Cavalry Lance up close. You can take a look at the tanks there. Overall, these actually look pretty good. Put one out, just so you can kind of... Some on their stand. Detailing is pretty decent. Yeah. Do take that. I didn't want to go for too many of the vehicle ones for a couple different reasons. I mean, one, I'm not... Don't know how much vehicle combat I'm really ever going to be doing on my tabletop. turret can turn, but it really can't. That's unfortunate. It'd be nice if the turret could turn. Yes. Yeah, not too shabby. Not too shabby indeed. Kind of hoping for a little more proposability. Of course, we have our set of cards, and I believe, look at this, a thick set of cards. It is just like the cards for the Savannah Master. So what you have here is you have your Alpha Strike cards on this side, and you have your Battle Support cards on this side. So whatever format of gameplay you're doing, these guys can be put to use. All right, now let's look at my battle mech packs. So the first one I opened up was the Inner Sphere Pursuit Lance. Got a set of cards right here. It's nice, it's just your standard pilot cards, your uh, Alpha Strike cards. It's nice. So the set itself is kind of cool. Nice little loadout here. Comes with a Cicada, a Clint, a Hermes 2, which is the reason I wanted this, and a Dervish, which is also pretty cool. The one thing I've noticed, and I'm gonna pull out here a little bit, they used to put the name the, like, the name thing next to each of the units, and now they're not doing it on this set. I don't know if they're going to be doing that with the later editions, or if they're just gonna be handing them in like this. I kinda like having the name placards next to them, just as a point for when you wanna show something off to people, you can kinda point to what each thing is. But I think this is going to be the way they're going to go from now on without the name placards, which is fine. Overall, I think the detailing is pretty good here. Give you another look at all three, all four guys. Hey, did you ever want a recon lance, but you were like, you know what, we need more firepower? Well. Congratulations, here's the Heavy Recon Lance. Actually has a pretty cool loadout here. Unfortunately, it also means I have a second Assassin. So, coolsies. But it also comes with the Charger, it comes with a Merlin, and it comes with a Ostrock. Which is actually one of the reasons I did this, because I like the Ost family of units. The Ostrock, Ost uh, Scout, and Ost Soul. Ost Soul, sorry about that. <laughs> My brain just kind of fuzzled out there for a second. Overall, I think these guys look pretty good. Getting a second assassin is kind of just meh to me. I don't think it's that useful for battle mech. But overall, I like this little set, and I picked this up mostly for the Ostrock, as I said. But I think it is actually a good set regardless, especially because that charger is probably going to be finding use in any number of my units, as it is a joke that one of my friends would pilot a charger if he was a mech warrior. The final set I chose to grab was the Inner Sphere Recon Lance, which is more of your traditional light mechs. Look at here, it comes with a Oz Scout, as I mentioned before, being a unit I like. In addition to the Javelin, the Spectre, and of course, the Firestarter, the Wicked Firestarter. So yeah, this makes me pretty happy. Uh, fun part about the Oz Scout is that it has to scan by waving its arms around, which is why I like it. I guess it's similar to reasons why people might like an urban mech or something along those lines, where you just want the ridiculousness of the unit over what it actually is capable of doing on the battlefield. Frankly though, I like these guys and it's nice having some light mechs I can do some work with here and put up into my forces. So I am looking forward to adding these guys into probably various units. I don't think all four are going to remain together for particularly long. Finally, we have the Mercenary box set. I like this special edition design for the cover. I like it having the big red version of the Chevron here. I think that looks pretty cool. And I actually very much 
I think this makes the box look really unique. And I appreciate that, though I do kind of wish I also had the standard box. I don't know if I'll actually buy that because that's kind of crazy, but I'm not entirely against having two sets of this based on what comes inside. So, without further ado, let's open up this bad boy. And we get quite a bit here. So, one, we got our little novella here. No one left behind. And cool little artwork for the cover here. Back has our flavor text. The fun little mercenary story. I'll have to read that. Probably give it a little review. Ooh, wow. <laughs> That's a lot of cards. All right, I'm gonna have to go through this deck eventually. Yeah, but this does come with a lot of units, so I'm not surprised, but still, whoa. Uh, then we have this set of cards here. Take a look there. Yeah, you can see how many come in this. This is a pretty good value for that, I'm gonna say. And this gives you your battle support cards and your alpha strike cards. So whatever you're going for, you're good. Of course, typical dice, standard white dice, nothing special. And we got our pilot cards right here, which of course are going to be a pain to get out. I tried getting them out earlier, people, and I cut around that too. Okay, let me try it again. And now we have our pilot cards right here. Not as many, need to be more. But, yep, yeah. slide those right back there. And our minis. Holy minis, man, here. One, two, three, four. Ooh, a little guy right there. Stubby guy, I guess I should say. And some vehicles. This is a pretty awesome set. You can look at the sheer amount of plastic you're getting here. So you're getting four vehicles, two little squat boys here, and then one, and then six more guys here. So you're looking at Eight mechs, four vehicles, ton of cards for everybody. We're gonna have to get to the lower section here, so give me a moment, and we will cut right to it. Okay, inside the box, we still got a lot of stuff here. We got our instructions, which I'd point out, I think this is the standard cover. So I wouldn't mind that cover looking, uh, looking nice on my shelf, but we'll worry about that another day. Real books, and eh, decent thickness here. Not surprised, there's a lot of stuff to talk about with the new rule set. Then we got nothing here of quick information. That's nice having our sheets here. And, uh, oops, I dropped it. I was going to try to do this. We got quite a few things in here for all our different new mechs. That's nice. Always like having that information. Now we have the standard primer, which I sure is, well, I wonder if it's the same primer that was in uh, Game of Armored Combat. It's definitely thicker than the one from the beginner box, but that doesn't mean much. That's the beginner box. Here's all your Mercenary logos. That might be a different one. Hmm. I may have to actually thumb through this and find out. I've also uh, done videos on a lot of these units. There's the He's and Hotheads. You covered them. Bad Dream. I covered them. Mercenary Craft. I covered them. I considered covering them. Let's see. There's the Blue Star Regulars. Covered them. <laughs> Yeah, just let me promote my other videos while we're here, you know? It's not that bad. Grave Walkers I was considering doing soon. Fourth Tal City has been on my queue for a long time. Hey! There's a unit that I've actually considered doing as well. Just gotta love the name of McGee's Cutthroats. Dismal Disinherited has been on the list for a long time. Waco Rangers might want to be expecting that later this year, in fact. Hint, hint. Of course, oh, they go with the company version. Okay. And of course, right here. So, all right, that's kind of cool. The mercenaries in the back. I wonder if there's more factions inside this. Huh? Now I'm getting curious, people. All right, I'm going to have to... Yeah, there's the Northwind Highlanders. So it looks like this is a different book now. Iridani Lighthorse. 
Oh, right. Great Death Legion. Yeah, it's more videos I've done. Well, I haven't done the Urdani. I'll, I'll get to that, I promise. Wolf's Dragoons. That's all I wanted to look at. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Promoting my videos in a video. That's how you do things, people. This is awesome. It's all the mercenaries. It's a new primer. Oh, thank you. Thank you for doing that. I was so certain at first that this was just going to end up being, you know, a rerun of other stuff we have. So getting new stuff. New stuff is good stuff. We then have the Inner Sphere 3058, which is a poster, it looks like, with an Inner Sphere, yeah, and an Inner Sphere 3151 on the rear side. Nice. It's always good to get a full poster, especially of territory. Not sure what side I'd actually frame that on. I've, I've been considering that. And all our standees. Holy moly, one sheet of standees. Two sheets of standees. Or these aren't standees, these are terrain thingies. All right, and we still have more. Holy moly, this box never ends. All right. Oh, shoot. So, this table. Always nice to have your tables. More table. Yeah. This guy that was right under it. Yeah, this is that's pretty cool. It's all the other information you might want to keep track of. More tables. I think this looks more like the standard table to me. So I think this is the standard table. Also, I love the fact that this is made of like a. There we go. It's it's made of like a higher quality kind of paper here, and it's um, laminated also nice okay yeah so all the rules all the tables you'll want this look, these look like the uh combat maps <laughs> my stubby fingers can't do it so yeah it's got our maps here one two and that looks like that's it empty box all right that's a lot of stuff so we have you know like some of the other games we have the double maps you can definitely play a large mission. You just need a table big enough to hold it all. All your extra information card stuff here, always nice. The, the two sets of standees. The mercenary primer, or excuse me, the uh, poster. <laughs> the mercenary primer. <laughs> I might just cut some of this. Your unit cards. And of course, your giant ass rule book. So yeah, a lot of stuff here. Really good bargain, honestly. When this gets sold regular, if you didn't do the Kickstarter, I would highly recommend this. Eight minis, a whole load of information, a whole load of support books. A lot of stuff that could help you expand your game, even if you're not gonna play the new rules. Just for the minis and all the other secondary stuff, this might be worth it. Especially if you want quick guides, on various mercenary factions, though I would recommend that if you want more in-depth information on mercenary factions, you watch my videos. <laughs> there, I'm sorry, I won't do any more self-promotion, I promise. So let's get to the conclusion. Overall, I'm quite satisfied with my company Kickstarter results. Yeah, I mean, would there have been other things I'd wanted in my salvage boxes? Yeah. <laughs> I could definitely say that, but only getting one dupe is kind of nice. The fighter and the big Mad Cat statue, pretty cool. I do like the design and everything inside the Mercenaries box. I need to go through the rules and what have you still, but overall I like it. I think I got a good mix of items without getting too crazy with the sheer amount of options I had available. Would I have liked a few more pins and some more of the challenge coins? Yeah, I probably would have, but... Eh, is what it is. The posters are pretty cool, and the sheer amount of digital goodies, a bunch of books I still need to read, and the audio books, which I'll eventually have the chance to go and listen to as I drift off to sleep, usually when I listen to an audiobook. Those will be nice too. I guess what I'm going to say is this, if you haven't gotten your box yet, then expect some pretty good stuff. 
If you have gotten your box, please let me know in the comments what you got. Did you get a bunch of dupes? Did you go for one of the larger sizes, one of the smaller sizes? Please let me know. Beyond that, please check out my Battletech faction briefings and my reviews of Battletech books where I do a little bit of a reading as well. All that being said, I finally can say what I've been wanting to say because it is hot and I really, really want to get to organizing all this loot. Thank you for watching. May your weapons stay hot and your reactors stay cool. Until next time, I'm the Dapper Bard and I'll see you at the tavern.